Take seven, motherfucker. Look at this article. It says an inmate at the Buzz Westfall Justice Center in St. Louis gets charged for brutally beating a female correctional officer. Isn't there some unwritten rule? Some fucking course or compendium or commandment that covers this? Like thou shalt not punch a female in the fucking face? Ever? For any fucking reason? If not, there should be. Maybe the public school system can slide this in right between common core math and how to put a condom on a banana. Between your thumb and forefinger, gently... Sorry, I'm a little fired up because last week, a fellow correctional officer, a sister of ours, was assaulted, beaten, hospitalized. The article I read said that 19-year-old Carnell Robinson was on the phone and wouldn't comply with the officer's orders to go to his room. And this is a pretty common interaction inside. The inmate is on the phone. The officer needs the inmate to get off the phone and lock down. The inmate refuses to get off the phone and lock down. The officer gives verbal directives to get off the phone and lock down. The inmate continues to talk on the phone. The officer gives another directive. The inmate continues to ignore the officer. The officer then cuts off the phone, which leads to an emotional explosion, which in this case led to the officer being assaulted. The article said that the inmate charged the officer, hitting her in the head more than 30 times with a closed fist. According to a spokesperson for the department, another inmate intervened and attempted to stop the beating, giving the officer time to hit her panic button to inform her fellow officers that she was in trouble. Chrissy was saved by another inmate. Another inmate intervened in this assault that was being conducted by uh, a very violent person. BTW, if you have a body alarm or a similar piece of equipment that is offered to you by your agency, wear it! And if it's one of those with multiple settings or one that you can turn off certain features, don't! Use it the way that it was intended to be used. It's not an inconvenience. It's your fucking lifeline. Hey, I got a question for you. How far away is your backup? Your help! How long would you have to fight before help arrived? Put it in the comments below. Seconds? Minutes? More than that? Do you even have backup? Well, I know some of you work alone. We're on a skeleton crew. Let me know. How long would it be them and you? How long have you had to wait for help? Our sister here was alone for 60 seconds. Our sister was taking shots to the face for 60 seconds. That's a long fucking time. Now our sister mother's Melba said that they didn't see any broken bones and there was a possibility that she could be released from the hospital this weekend. Let me just read this. Melba, that's her mother, said that her daughter had been experiencing increasing anxiety and concern over the lack of staffing at the jail. Lack of staffing at the jail? Gee, that's a fucking shocker. Scott Anders, the director of the Department of Justice Services, said that the jail where she works, the jail where this attack happened, is down 78 officers. That there are 78 vacancies right now. Currently, today. And yes, understaffing does play a huge role in this. And agencies need to figure out a way to lure in and retain staff. Well, let's not go there. Not right now. Let's do this. Let's brainstorm. What can we do as officers on shift in this situation to limit the possibility of us being assaulted in this scenario? Now, before we go there, I'm not suggesting in any way that our sister could have done anything to avoid this attack. And none of us can, really. All of us. Any of us at any time could be fighting for our lives. So how can we limit the possibility of being put in this predicament? Well, let's start with your reactionary gap. In which in PPCT, is it PPCT anymore? I think it's like F H R G or H F R G. Either way, they say that an officer should maintain a distance of at least six feet of the individual that they're interacting with. That's of course a weaponless individual. If they're armed, it's like 10 feet plus the length of the weapon. This gap gives you time to react. <laughs> of course, that's why they call it the reactionary gap. How do you see why I don't teach self-defense? So in this scenario, when I've encountered this situation and an individual won't get off the phone when I need them to lock down, I've engaged them from afar, from a distance that is consistent with maintaining a reactionary gap. A space that I can defend myself should that individual decide to attack. And so when you're interacting, make sure you give clear and concise directives. And the way you deliver these directives could play into the outcome. There are a lot of ways to tell an inmate that it's time to lock down and get off the phone. And if you're aggressive, if you're excited, and if you're using profanity to punctuate your point, the outcome may be different than if you start way down here. So in this situation, if I have an individual that is being mm, uncooperative, I'll jump on the radio or the phone. I'll get my help rolling so I won't be all alone. That way, if that individual decides to attack, decides to fight, my help is already on the way. 
One of the things that I see officers do that almost always ends up in a physical altercation is closing that gap, is getting really, really close to that individual and then taking their finger just like this, like this, and say, get off the phone or I'm going to hang up this phone. I'm going to hang up this mother... If you don't get off this fucking phone right there. And then boom, they hang up the phone. Now I understand that the inmate should have followed directives before it got to this point. But I just want you to understand if you're in close proximity, if that's the route that you choose to go, it may come to blows. So be prepared. Now I'm guilty of doing this a time or two. Getting just a little too close in the strike zone. But I knew when I made my approach that I was in danger. That I was not making an intelligent choice. So don't do that. Learn from my mistakes. So you've engaged the inmate. You've... You've, you've got your help rolling on the way, and then the first level of force is what? Officer presence. So the more officers you have, the less likely that individual is to go off, to get crazy. But with more of you there, you should be able to handle the situation just a little more safely. Have you guys ran into this situation before? What's worked for you? What hasn't worked for you? Drop in the comments below. Let us know. Did the inmate return to the cell safely or no? I'll end by saying this. What happens to one of us happens to all of us. And I think I can speak for all of us when I wish our sister a full and speedy recovery. If you like this video, if you found value in this video, straight punch the little like icon. Comment and share this content with anyone and everyone that you think may be interested. Subscribe and click that little bell so you're notified every time I release another video. And if you're looking for more correctional content, head on over to my Facebook page. I'll post the link in the description below so you know where to go. And don't forget to check out my books, When Home Becomes a Housing Unit and The Nothing That Never Happened. Both are available on Amazon. Guys, I'm also thinking about putting out some long form content in the way of lives and, and interviews and, and, and sort of a podcast-esque type of video. And I, I did that not too long. I dropped that last week. So be on the lookout for that. All right, guys, that's all I got. Until next time, be smart, stay safe, stay sane, and we'll talk soon. Hey, 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 yeah. Ay, ay, yo, yo, ay, 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 ah, yo, 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 let's go. I feel like